Hello Internet! Today we are going to be taking a look at how you can create objects that react when they become into the frame of whatever your game is doing. Uh, so this is useful if you want to do like some of the angels, for example, from Doctor Who, or something else that is going to kind of sneak up behind you when you're not looking. Um, in the past, I've done this using dot products. Um, dot products are a way for you to kind of get the angle between two vectors so you can figure out how far something is. I've used that to see if something is in front or behind of the player. Instead, we're actually going to use a frustum and an axis line bounding box using some of Unity's geometry utilities and use that to solve this problem instead and hopefully get a better, better solution. Um, so that's what we're going to play with today. Um, if you've never used this stuff, that's cool. We'll, we'll talk about it. Um, but yeah, I have a for the purposes of this, an empty project, um, I am adding this onto another project, but ignore that. Um, and so we just have our main camera and then a directional light in this scene. What I want to do is be able to insert some objects. Let's just add. Let's use cubes, I guess. Um, and let's put this there. Um, so zero, zero, zero. Um, so it just goes there into the center of our screen. Um, for this, the collider type does not really matter. We're using a bounding box for this. So what that's going to mean, um, you might see this written as AABB, um, is axis align bounding box. What that means is that there is a center point for the box, and then it has a height, depth, and width attached to it. So two vector threes that kind of define how it all works, and it doesn't have a rotation. It also means more complicated things like, say, a sphere it is still going to be a cube. It's still going to be a box for this this purpose. Um, so that's something to keep in mind if you're trying to do something more precise is that this you might need to be a little bit more creative in how that works. It's also aligned to your geometry, which means you can't rotate these these boxes. Um, that's not really that's not really what they're for. So that's that. Um, what we want to do is have some way to detect if this box is in our camera's view or outside of our camera's view. Um, so we're just going to do a in camera detector. Uh, and I'm kind of making this up as I go because <laughs> I don't really know. Um, but what we really want is something that's going to detect if this object is in our view or out of our view. Um, so I'm going to attach this to our cube. And so now our cube has an in-camera detector attached to it. And then we're just going to start editing this. <laughs> um, so for this, we're going to be basing this off of our camera. So we're going to want a camera, which is just going to be the camera that we're working with. Um, I'm going to be pulling all of this stuff and actually grabbing the cameras and things that I'm talking about. So we're going to leave it like this. Um, we could make it public and kind of let you configure it, but I don't think we want that. Um, we'll do all that in the start instead. And then I'm also going to attach to the mesh render. Um, and we're just going to call that the render. And then the other things we're going to need, we'll get to in a second. Um, so what we're going to do is grab our camera. So camera is going to be equal to camera.main. This is going to find the main camera for our scene and assign it to this camera object. So now we have a reference to our camera and we can use that for everything else we're going to use. This means that we just have one lookup for that and then we'll just keep it consistent. Um, that seems like an easier way to do this. Uh, and then mesh render, we're going to do that because what I want to do is change the color, I guess, of this when it's in or out of view. Um, so we're going to find that as well and just do render equals get component. And we're going to go and get our mesh render. There we go. And so now that we have both of these, we can actually do some of the other fun things. So the way this works is we need to define the camera frustrum, um, which is this. Um, if you ever clicked on the camera, you get this weird pyramid thing um, coming out from the center of your camera and then going out and increasing usually in size, unless you're doing like an orthographic projection. Um, what this is, is your camera frustrum. Um, so it has a perspective, so it gets wider the further you get, and that's what's causing the perspective change. That's why things appear smaller, because you have basically these layers throughout all this pyramid, and each one of those layers 
fits into the same number of pixels, but is wider across your screen. It has a bigger space. Um, so that's why you're getting all this. That doesn't really <laughs> matter at all. But the important thing with this is we can define this as a series of planes. Um, in this case, we have the top one up here. So it goes along the top. And then we have two on the side and one on the bottom. So instead of defining this as like a cone, instead we're defining it as a series of four planes for the top, bottom, left, and right. And we can use that to say, find us all the stuff in the middle. Um, so that's what, that's what we're going to do next, is actually find all of those planes. Uh, so we are going to want to grab our camera frustum. I think I'm spelling that right. I always get this wrong, so we're just going to leave it that way. Um, and say geometry utility dot um, calculate frustum planes. Um, so there's a few other things here. We'll get to that in just a second, but we're just going to pass in the camera. And this is going to get us the, those planes for this camera. So now we have access to basically what dimensions it, does our camera have visibility into. And this is going, going to return a plane array which we can just save here. So camera custom like that. Uh, and this should be a plane array. And I'm realizing this is small, so let's make this a bit bigger. There we go. <laughs> um, and so now we have this series of camera planes. Um, important to note, in this case, we're checking, we're doing all these checks on spawn. Um, so all of this, is going into the start method. If you're trying to do this in real time and check if like an object is coming into play, especially if the camera can rotate or otherwise moves, you will need this part to be in your update because otherwise it's not it's only going to update it once. And so the camera planes are still going to be where it was original originally, even after your camera moves, they're not going to update. So keep that in mind <laughs> if you don't put this in your update. Uh, it's not going to work. Um, thinking about that, let's just put it there for now. Why not? Uh, it shouldn't hurt anything. Uh, the only different, the only downside of this is that it's going to run it a bunch more. Um, sure, why not? This will be fine. Uh, so we do that, and then what we can do is just run our test. Um, so what we want to do is use another one of those geometry utility functions um, and do geometry utility dot test planes a a b. I believe. Um, and so this is going to take in a series of the planes that we have, um, which we called our camera frustum. And then a series of bounds, which we still need. We don't have these yet. Um, so we need to go and find some boundaries. Uh, so let's add some bounds here. And for those, we're just going to say our bounds equals get components of a collider. So we're going to find any collider attached to this object and get the bounds. Uh, and then that should figure that out. So this is a default thing on all Unity colliders that they can provide you a bounding box. Uh, and so you can use this to get that bounding box regardless of the type of collider you're using. Um, you'll see I didn't use like box collider or sphere collider. I just use a collider. So this will work for any of the colliders we attach to our object. And then we're just going to grab the bounds and figure it out from there. Uh, so I can plug that in here now. Um, there we go. And so now what we're doing is everything inside of this if block is going to execute if we are inside of those camera planes. Um, so let's take our render and find the shared material and change the color to something. <laughs> um, I don't know what. But we'll do green, I guess. Um, so we're going to just make everything green if, if you come into the camera bounds. And otherwise, uh, we're just going to say shared material color color dot red. So it's red if it's outside of the boundaries of the camera and green if it's inside. And that should be it. That's everything we need. Um, the important two functions are right here. Just calculating those planes so you have a boundary of where to check. Um, 
And keep in mind, if you don't want to use a camera, if you want to, this to be something else, maybe inside of a room or something, you could also use this test planes for that. You just would not use the camera to generate that. You'd use something else. Um, so that's, yeah, that, that's that. So let's see what happens. Um, so if I run this now, we should have a green box. We do. But now if I go and grab the box, uh, grab our cube and move it, eventually it should turn red. Or not. <laughs> um, what have I done? Well, that's unfortunate. Because it's definitely outside of our bounding box now. Interesting. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, I've screwed something up and I don't know what. Uh, so. Let's go and double check my work and just make sure I have thought of everything correctly. Um, let's see here. We have our camera and our renderer. We have our boundaries. And. Oh, that's probably not what we want. Um, let's move this. Let's let's change how we're doing this. Um, so instead, we're going to save the collider um, like this, because I believe that bounds is a static object, so it's not going to update as we move our object. It's not a reference to the bounding box of our object. It's actually calculated. Um, which means that as I move it, that it doesn't actually change, which is why we aren't seeing any updates. Uh, so if I change this to store the collider instead, we can pull the boundaries out like this. Uh, so bounds equals our collider dot bounds. And now it should work. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Uh, so let's see if this works. Um, and and What's happening there is uh, we used, I believe, that bounding box is a struct type, which is a value type. What that means is that it's not going to update as you're using your code. So um, as, as we're moving our object, even though its position and bounding box is changing, the time we requested it isn't going to regenerate that because it was a fixed value that is already calculated in, in our memory. Uh, so. Now I should be able to move this and it should change color. And you can see as soon as it leaves the screen on the right hand side, it turns red in our scene view. Um, and that should happen on all sides. And it's specific to how our camera is defined. So we can actually change this to, I think, we're even recalculating our camera boundary. So I can make this red and then increase my viewing angle, I think. I'd have, I've never tried this before. Um, let's see, how do I even do that in the universal rendering pipeline? I don't know. <laughs> um, field of view, oh, there we go. So as I increase the field of view, you can actually see it now it turns green and then it goes red again because we're changing those planes. So anyway, that is how this works. Uh, and you can use this as a way to kind of detect if things are in view or out of view and use it to uh, create like those Again, the angels from Doctor Who is sort of what I always go to when I think of this kind of thing, because that's kind of the iconic thing. But there's so many other things you can do with this, even if you just like don't want to do a bunch of extra like graphical work because something isn't on the screen and nobody's going to see it. This gives you a way to kind of pretend like that's not there um, and sort of do some tricks or maybe even just get rid of the object and put it somewhere else because it's not on the screen anymore and you need it gone. Um, you, however, whatever makes sense for what you're doing, you can use this for that. Um, so hopefully this is useful. Um, I have done some videos on the dot product method as well. If that's something you're interested in, I'll leave some links somewhere. Um, but this is a better solution, I think, than that. The dot product solution is really cool but it doesn't adjust for things like the camera's field of view and it has other edge cases that it doesn't account for that this will catch so yeah, overall i think this is probably the better and safer solution for for most things 
Anyway, um, I'm going to leave it here. So hopefully this is useful and you can use it in your projects. If you do, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. Other than that, I will see you in the next video. So until then, see you, internet.